Hey, what's up YouTube? Today I'm going to do an engine oil pan and gasket replacement on this uh, 2001 Audi A6 with the 2.8 liter V6 engine. But uh, something to make a note of is that uh, this is the third engine oil pan replacement I'm doing on this uh, 2.8 liter engine been made by Volkswagen. And what happens is that uh, these engine oil pans are just way too, close to, way too close to the ground and whenever people go into a dip or, you know, there's a bump, they go over real, they go over it too fast and then they scrape the bottom of their engine. The engine oil pan, which is also made out of aluminum, which is a softer metal, it cracks and then you get a you get an oil leak from there. And uh, if you have one of these cars and you know, you first you want to make sure you don't go into any dips real fast. <laughs> and if you do, uh, you want to pull to the side, make sure you're not leaking from there, because if you get a big leak and all the uh, engine oil leaks out you're gonna ruin your engine and then you'll be looking for a used engine instead of just replacing the oil pan okay okay next you want to raise and support the front of the car on both sides with some uh, jack stands but before you do that make sure you apply your emergency parking brakes and lock both rear wheels okay Okay, so what you will need to do next is to remove this weather shield that's underneath your engine. Uh, the previous owner has already removed this, so I'm not going to be able to show you how to do it. But it's basically, you just go around the circumference and it's going to be held in with a bunch of uh, screws and two big screws in the back. And then probably there's going to be plastic screws that hold it uh, on the sides to the railing for your wheel. Okay. Okay, next we dive underneath the car and here's a look at our engine oil pan and there's a crack. Uh, this is a pretty big one. Uh, they got pretty lucky being able to pull over to the side just in time before all the oil drained out. Uh, so what we're going to do next is basically, uh, if you still got oil in this, in our case we don't because all the oil has been already drained out of from here. Just uh, undo this and remove all the oil. Then we're going to go, actually we're going to remove this uh, oil level sensor then there is a little bracket on the other side which is held in these which is holding these two power steering uh, fluid lines to our engine oil pan we're going to remove that and then we're going to go around the circumference and remove all these bolts and then we'll be able to remove this engine oil pan okay all right first up our engine oil level sending unit there we go Okay, next we're going to take out this bracket that's on this side, which is held in by one 5mm hex headed bolt, okay? And here's how this bracket looks like. We're just going to go around all the circumference of this engine oil pan and remove all these 10mm bolts. I'll probably leave in the two in the middle just so they hold it in place. I'll loosen them, but I'll leave them in there, but then I'm gonna remove all the, all, the, all the other ones and then remove this engine oil pan. Okay, here's something I should have spotted earlier. <laughs> the bolts that are in the back of this engine oil pan are covered by this uh, sway bar. So what we're gonna have to do is remove these pieces that hold this sway bar in on both sides here and that guy down there that will probably be able to just push this sway bar down and have it and then have access to those uh, to those bolts okay okay and you'll need a thir 13 millimeter deep socket to remove these two nuts that are holding this in okay Okay, and here's this side. Now we should be able to just push this down. All right, next we'll just go back to removing all these bolts. Okay, so with only these two bolts on the sides remaining and our engine oil pan loose, we're gonna take these out by hand and then we're gonna remove our uh, engine oil pan. Make sure you have a catch pan ready because you'll still there still might be some oil left in this engine oil pan, okay? There we go. Alrighty, and here's our new oil pan. What we're gonna do next is put some uh, black RTV silicone all around this mating surface, and then we'll put in our uh, new gasket. I'm not a big fan of RTV silicone on uh, you know oil pans and stuff unless the manufacturer asks for it. 
And since the new uh, oil pan gasket came with some RTV silicone and the old one also had RTV silicone on it, I'm assuming it's required by the manufacturer, so that's what we're gonna do. Okay, what we're gonna do is put first put a layer of RTV, even layer of RTV silicone on the oil pan, and then when we put the gasket on, we'll put a thinner coat on the gasket, then we'll slap this back on the engine, okay? Okay, and here's our new gasket. Gonna make sure all the bolt holes are lined up. Okay, next we just uh, start applying our thin layer of uh, RTV silicone. Okay, so after uh, thoroughly cleaning the mating surface with some brake clean and rags, uh, we're ready to slap our uh, new engine oil pan back on. Just make sure as you put this on, the gasket doesn't move, and then we're gonna start. Uh, we're gonna start putting the the center bolts first and then work your way out. Just have a couple of these bolts ready so you can you know hold this in place. There's one. Okay so after we get these two in we're gonna go ahead and you know start all of the bolts with hand make sure you know they that you can put them in and the holes line up with the gasket and everything then we'll torque them down going from the same pattern going from the center out okay Okay, now I don't know the torque spec for this, but if I had to guess, I would say about nine foot pounds. So, but I'm just gonna go with the experience, you know, and feel. But if you wanna do it by the book, you wanna make sure you do it with the torque wrench, okay? Okay, if you torque everything down, it wouldn't hurt to do a second pass too. But after we do that, we're gonna put it in our oil level sending unit. Okay, next we reattach its connector. Let's so put this little bracket back on. Okay, so I won't bore you with the rest of this. What you wanna do next is just basically put the sway bar machine back on, tighten that down, and then uh, uh, you wanna wait four to five hours for the silicone to cure, and then put oil and start the car, let it idle for 15 minutes. You know, if you can afford it, you can. You should then replace the oil and the oil filter, and put a new oil filter and new oil in there, and then you should be good to go. That's given. There's no oil leaks. All right. So yeah, I'll put this video also out there. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more like it. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.